Hey guys, we are doing another mini reviews and we are starting with July now. And uh, I was just looking over all the videos that I did in July and this is gonna have to be a two-parter as well, just like June and I think also just like May. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it because I've got a lot of things to just give you my quick thoughts and, and final review on. So let's start with a video that I uploaded on July 3rd and this was a look at the new, at that time, brand new Flesh Beauty line. And I was just really intrigued by it. It was started by um, Linda Wells, who was the editor-in-chief of Allure magazine. And it just looked very uh, modern. It looked really youthful. So I was just really, really interested in it. But I was very disappointed in most of the products. Most definitely, I was very, very disappointed in the Firm Flesh Thick Stick Foundation. I remember the size, I returned it. I remember the size of it was teeny tiny. It looked like a deluxe sample. And I just also didn't like the formula of it. I found it to be... Uh, like it went on okay, but very quickly it started to look a little bit dry and you know, I did a whole day wear test and it just faded. It just wasn't good. I just didn't like that at all. Um, the highlighting powder I liked and I actually kept one of them. I got Lift and Jump and I think I returned Lift because it was too deep for my skin tone and I kept Jump, but I just never ever used it. So I just decluttered that. And then I also picked up the Flesh Blush in Glaze and that I've actually kept. It's a really pretty like terracotta color although you can still see that there's like the imprint in there. So I have not really used this that much since I got it, but I do like the blush. It's very, very pigmented. So if this is something you're interested in, just be wary of that because yeah, I've had, I've had problems. The one time I think I did use this after the video, it went on so dark. I was like, okay, I have to like put a lot of loose powder over it. Uh, the eyeshadow palette, I think they've come out with more than the initial eyeshadow palette that they released, but I returned that as well. There was a lot of fallout and I generally don't experience that much fallout. Even when people are like, oh my God, this has so much fallout. I, you know, definitely use this eyeshadow palette before you put foundation on. I don't generally experience that much fallout. I don't know if it's because I don't really load up my brush that much. I don't know, whatever the case is, I don't generally personally experience a lot of fallout, but I did with this eyeshadow. So I was very, very surprised. I was very taken aback, so I returned it. And then I got some of their lip products, the Strong Flesh Lipstick and then the Fleshy Lips Lipstick. And I returned all of those basically because I just didn't find anything extraordinary about them at all. The colors, very dupable. The formula, very average. It didn't seem um, extremely comfortable on my lips at all. They didn't seem extremely pigmented at all. They just were very middle of the road and I was like, I don't need these in my collection. So I returned all of those. So the only two things I kept was the highlighter and the blush and I've already decluttered the highlighter. So the Flesh Beauty line for me personally was just a big bust. All right, so the next video that I uploaded on July 4th was the Becca and Chrissy Teigen collab. This is, I believe, the second time they were collabing, if I'm remembering correctly. The first time she came out with the palette, and then this time she came out with some other products. So she came out with this Glow Body Oil, and I really like this. I just, I'm just not in the habit of using uh, like body oils like this. I also don't wear very like revealing clothing. So I know this would be great like on your clavicle and your shoulders and things like that, but very rarely am I showing those things off. So while I like having this around, <laughs> I like actually having this on my shelf. I think it's just really pretty to look at. And this smells nice, I remember, that's right didn't really have, it had a beachy scent, but it didn't really smell like coconut too much. But I really like this product, uh, but no, I, I definitely don't use things like this that often. And then they also came out with this Endless Bronze and Glow palette. And I just picked this up because, you know, I like Becca highlighters, um, I like their products, I like their powder products. So I thought this could be really interesting. And generally when I purchase Palettes like this where they have all three face, you know, cheek products all in one pan, I generally regret it or I just end up using like a little portion of it. So I just, so I've just been using like basically the highlight area here and then it'll dip into the blush a little bit. But again, it's just, it's too fussy for me to use. So this is a product that I definitely have not used very often. And then this bronzer is a little bit deep for me. So I just kind of stay away from that. But this is, uh, I believe the Beach Nectar Powder 
that was in their first collab, which was this big palette, and I believe that's this shade. I love this highlight, and I know that this is supposed to be the same thing, but I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's just too difficult for me to get in there, but it's not the same to me. This one I felt like is just much more, I don't know, like golden. It's just really pretty, and it it's just like eking into, like it's a little bit too deep for my skin tone, but doesn't stop me. I just put it right on. I make sure I buff it in. I don't put it on with a heavy hand and it just adds like a really nice like peachy, peachy, very peachy kind of glow to my cheeks. So I really liked this palette. I thought this was pretty. This one, unfortunately, I just don't use that often. And this guy, I just really like having around, but no, I do not use this guy very often at all. All right, next, on July 5th, I put up a makeup brush haul, and it was part one. So in this part one, I'm basically talking about, uh, yeah, Japanese handmade brushes. So actually, I don't know if these are handmade. The majority of them are Japanese handmade brushes, but the first two I talked about are two Shiseido brushes. These are squirrel hair, and so I got the powder brush and the cheek brush. And they're really, really soft. I really enjoy these brushes. This one to me is like a beefier version of, and maybe not quite as soft, but a beefier version of the Suku cheek brush. And I find this one to actually be a little bit more effective uh, for me in putting on like a nice decent amount of blush. Again, the Suku cheek brush, if you missed my Suku video, that cheek brush, I think it gives you a really light application. Uh, it's a beautiful application, it's very airbrush, but it's very light. And for me to get the amount of blush that I want on my cheeks, it just takes that brush way too long. This one has, again, not quite as soft uh, hairs as the Suku, but this one definitely lays down uh, blush faster for me. So I really enjoy this brush. And this powder brush is very nice. I don't really use this to apply powder too much. It's a very wispy, light brush, as you can probably see. And I really like this. If I feel like I'm just looking a little bit powdery, I'll kind of just, I don't know, I just like using this not as a finishing brush, but just as like a brush away brush. Like it just has a really nice soft touch and I just like kind of, I don't know, just brushing away extra product with this brush. So I really like these two brushes. These are always kind of close by for me. All right, and then after the Shiseido brushes, I talked about this big Chikahoto haul that I did. So let's try and do these quickly. So I picked up the Chikahoto GSN 4 brush and this is actually the second one that I was picking up, but this is a beautiful um, squirrel haired brush. It is great for cheek products. It's great if you want to add a little bit of like contour or bronzer here. I really like this for blush. It has a round ferrule, a nice egg shaped dome top, and I really like buffing in my blush. This is squirrel hair, so I do like to take it a little bit easy here. I'll generally use like a sweeping motion with this one as well, but I really like this brush. Very, very soft. I like this GSN line. I'm not the biggest fan of like the white pearl handle and the gold ferrule. It's, I don't know, it's just a, like a little bit weird looking to me, but they're easy to find in your drawer. And I really like the, like the shapes of of the brushes in this line. But anyway, that's the GSN 4. And then I picked up the Z4, which is this uh, cheek brush. This is one of my uh, favorite Chikahoto brushes. It's like oval shaped. It's, it has a great kind of like sweeping motion that you can use with it. This is squirrel hair as well. It's incredibly, incredibly soft. And you can just use this for anything on your cheeks. I love using it for blush also. It's just really beautiful. If I have like a really subtle highlight, I'll use a brush like this big and just kind of sweep it across my, or like over on top of my cheekbone. I just love it. This is a great, great brush, beautiful beautiful brush. And then I got the Chikahoto R-P5, and that is this short kapuki style uh, brush. And I actually picked up two in this haul. I also picked up this uh, Chikahoto T3 brush. So this one, I definitely use more than this one. This one I have used to actually apply like foundation. It's a little bit dense for me, so I have to be careful. I can't go in too hard. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just moving the foundation around. I'm actually not getting it into my skin. But if I have like a fast setting foundation, and I'm trying to think of an example. Of course, I can't think of one right now, but you know, you have foundations that set a little bit more quickly than others. This is great for that because you can really like buff in the foundation very quickly. So that's what I use this for. This one, I have to admit, I haven't used 
quite as often. So you can see the brush hairs are a little bit shorter, so it makes this one even more dense. And I just haven't found like the right purpose for this. I know there's one out there, but I just haven't found the right purpose for this. I think I used it a couple times when I first picked it up. If I applied like bronzer a, a little bit too deeply, what I would do is just go in with this and it would really buff out the edges and it made a really nice kind of like clean up your mistakes, buff out anything that you put on with too heavy of a hand. Um, so I used this a couple of times for that, I recall, but I really haven't picked this brush up lately. And then I talked about the Chikahoto R-H1 brush. This brush I absolutely love for applying blush. So that's what the shape of this one is. So the bristles really kind of fan out, it's angled, it's so, so soft, and it's just a great uh, cheek brush. I absolutely love this brush. This one is a great angled cheek brush. Oh, and then we talk about the Chikahoto Artist 20-10 brush. And this is another brush that at first I just didn't reach for very often. I think these are dyed goat hair. Um, if I'm not mistaken. But at that time, I was using more rounded powder brushes. So I wasn't reaching for this one that often. This is also just a little bit too big for anything else. Um, so I was using it occasionally, like if my um, Sonia G Sculpt One brush was dirty, I would go in and use this. This one is nice. Um, it has a similar kind of like shape and effect to it because it is pinched. But I started using this to apply powder, uh, loose setting powder quite often because I like sweeping that away and this like flat but like fluffy top was really, really great for it. So this has become like one of my favorite brushes in my collection. I just love the shape of it. I love how it's flat but fluffy at the top all at the same time. And so yeah, so I like using it to sweep and I like using it to apply uh, bronzer or contour. And then I picked up two eye brushes as well. So this is the T7 brush. This is a flat shader brush. I use this all the time. I find this fairly interchangeable with like my Hakuhodo J5523 that I love. This one is a little bit uh, flatter. That one kind of, uh, you know, like blooms a little bit. This one is a little bit flatter. So this one is great um, for like all over the lid uh, kind of colors or like uh, more shimmery metallic shades. I'll go in with um, brushes like this. So this has been great. I use that all the time. And then this brush, I definitely don't use that often. This is the T6 brush, but I just didn't really have anything this shape. It's basically a gigantic eyeshadow brush, but you can use it for, you know, obviously whatever you want. I think uh, some people would use this maybe for highlight. I like a little bit more of a dispersed highlight effect. So this is a little bit too pointed for me, but I do use this on my eyes. If I just wanna lay down like one color, like one shade all over my lid, I will go in with uh, a brush like this. A brush that I don't use often, but it definitely has come in handy. And then the rest of the brushes that I talk about in this video are from Koyudo, and I ordered this off of CD Japan. So I had just started following CD Japan on Instagram, and they had just posted like an announcement that they had some white Canadian squirrel and red Canadian squirrel hair brushes. And I know that those are very, very rare. They can only harvest their fur like a very, very short period of time every year. So when they release these brushes, there's only a few, and then those are the only ones available for the year. So when I saw that, I just got what I could, and that ended up being two of the red squirrel hair brushes and three of the white. Uh, squirrel hair brushes. So these are by far some of the very, very best eye brushes I have ever used. They're like magic. So just, you know, if you were to touch them, the red squirrel, I feel like um, feels a little bit, yeah, like a little bit softer than the white Canadian. And you know, when I got them, I thought, oh, well, you know, no wonder people rave about them. They're really soft. But then I thought, well, I bet they don't pick up any product. They're so soft. They pick up a surprising amount of product. And when these brushes lay down the product, it lays it down almost like it knows exactly what you want. It lays down the pigment so evenly and like gradual. So my experience generally with like synthetic hair brushes is it'll just kind of like plop the pigment down at first, and then you have to spend your time like blending it out. This just, it just kind of applies it in such an even fashion. It's almost surprising. The first time I used these, I was like, like that must've been a fluke. And then I used it again and I kept using them and I thought, 
God, these are amazing. So that's been my experience with these brushes. Same with these. I find the red to be a like a minuscule amount better than the white. But these brushes I find pick up maybe a little bit more uh, pigment than the red. They both pick up a surprising amount of pigment for brushes that are incredibly soft. But this little one, so I think this is the White Canadian Squirrel Small Brush. This one has been my absolute favorite like eyeliner brush. And I haven't been using these brushes uh, when I film very often because they're just so hard to get. It's not like they're just out of stock. They're just really, really hard to get. But I have to say these are definitely by far some of my absolute favorite, favorite eye brushes, all of these. So those are the Koyuru White Canadian Squirrel and red squirrel hair brushes. If you are interested in brushes like these, I would definitely follow CD Japan on Instagram, uh, maybe turn on notifications, and they will post when these brushes are available. All right, and then in makeup brush haul part two, which I uploaded on July 6th, the first thing I talk about is the Isam Pro series brush set that I purchased off of Muse Beauty Pro. I love these brushes. So I didn't realize that Isam had sable hair brushes and sable hair is one of my absolute favorite uh, hairs to use with makeup because you can use them with powders, you can use them with um, creams and liquids. They're much more resilient than like squirrel hair, especially um, even goat hair. And they have such an interesting kind of like texture to them. So this is the brush set that I got. So there's like an eyeliner brush in there, which, you know, I use, I just don't use eyeliner brushes that often, but this one, it's dirty. So I must have just used it. That is W1. And then um, W19 is like a very small flat shader brush. And I love using this for like inner corner or if I just want to get eyeshadow like right down here in the corner of my inner lid here, I'll use this brush. So that's the W19. And then it also came with the W21, which is a great flat shader. This one is dirty, so I just use this one. Uh, but this is just great for like all over. And Sable Hair has that quality that I was just sort of explaining about these like red uh, squirrel hair brushes and the white Canadian ones in that it really like lays down the product very, very nicely, very, very gradually. Um, it doesn't just like plop all the pigment down. It really kind of like lays it down and blends it as it goes. It's fabulous and I just love uh, Sable Hair. So this is the W23, a flat shader that is much larger than the 21. And then there's the W25, which is a very large, that's how big it is. It's a very large uh, shader brush. And then there's the W36 and the W35. So these are basically the same shaped brushes. And I've talked about the W36 a lot because this is one of my all time favorite brushes, like of, of anything, of synthetic, natural hair, brand, anything. But it has a round ferrule, it comes up and then it's angled. So I love using this to deepen up the outer corner of my eye. You just add the shadow on and then you just place it and you flick and you just get this perfect like placement of shadow right on your outer V right there and it's like done with like a couple flicks. I just absolutely love this brush. And this one is great. This one's just a little bit too uh, big for me. You can see how high it comes up. It almost reaches my eyebrow. So this one's just a little bit too big for me. So the four brushes I use the most in this kit are the W23, W19, the W21. So these are all like flat shaders of different sizes. And then this W36. I can't recommend this brush enough because it's just a really, really unique shape. As much as I love unique shapes, sometimes when it comes to brushes, they're just not handy. You know, I look at them and I think, oh, that's so cool. I've never seen that. I purchase it and then I don't know what to do with it. This one is like indispensable for me now. So that's the W36, highly recommend. So the Smashbox Cream Cheek Brush. So I actually have two of these. That's how much I like this brush. This is a brush that I uh, decided to give a shot because I thought it would be a nice dupe for the Zoeva uh, 110 brush, uh, brush, the face shape brush. And it is, it, it's not shaped exactly. It's not quite as domed as the 110 Zoeva brush. It's a little bit flatter. I mean, it's, it's angled a little bit, but it's a little bit flatter. But uh, to me, it works in the exact same way. And I love, love using this for cream products. Uh, if I add cream contour, cream blush, cream highlight, anything on my face, 
this is absolutely perfect. In fact, I think I've come to like it more than the Zoeva. I don't know if it's because maybe it is a little bit flatter and I'm always using it on like a flat part of my face. I just love it. But this is the brush that like Lisa Eldridge always uses for foundation, which I would imagine is pretty awesome because of this dome top. You can get around like the nose really easily and you know, just around the face. Um, for me personally, this is just too small for a foundation brush. I don't need something massive, but this is just like, I don't have two hours to blend in my foundation. So um, I just end up using all of these brushes for cream products. And yeah, I have to say, I think I reach for these more than I reach for the Zoeva. So that's the Smashbox uh, Cream Cheek Brush. And then I got a whole bunch of brushes from Sigma. I'm just gonna talk about the brushes that I like and that I actually use. Cause I'm looking at the very first brush that I talk about, which is the F04 Extreme Contour. I know that's a brush that I never used. I also never used the F56 Accentuate Highlighter Brush. That's the second one that I talk about. But I do see in here brushes that I have used and that I do use and that I really, really like. So let me just pull those out and show you those brushes. All right, so these are the four Sigma brushes out of this particular list that I have gone back to over and over again, and I do really enjoy using. So the Precision Round Brush, the P82 brush, this is one that has like a domed top and it's pretty dense. I really love using this for under eye concealer. It blends it in really nicely and it kind of mimics like the shape of this, kind of mimics like my finger whenever I tap in concealer. If I just don't feel like using my finger, I'll grab this brush and I'll just stamp it in. It's just really great. And then I can kind of sweep back and forth to make sure like all the edges are uh, blended out. So that's the P82, really like this brush. In fact, I have two and they're both dirty, so I use them quite often. And then the E25 blending brush. This to me is like the one synthetic dupe I use that word very, very lightly because, I don't know, I feel like comparing synthetic brushes to natural hair brushes, like comparing apples to oranges, but this has a very similar shape, at least to my favorite Hakuhodo J5523. And for a synthetic, this works very, very nicely. So this is the E25. And then these two um, Kabuki brushes, these are definitely not my like favorite foundation brush. As you guys know, I love my Sonia G Base One brush, which is like a duo fiber. But these, I have to say, are really, really nice if I want to blend in like a thicker concealer, like my stick foundation from Tom Ford. I like using these brushes or I'll use like the Smashbox Cream Cheek brush if I feel like I've applied it and maybe it just needs a little bit more buffing in. I really like using these brushes. Um, so any foundations that I find a little bit um, thicker and that need to be worked in a little bit more, I will use these brushes. And between the F80, which is this flat one, and the F82, which is this round one, I feel like they're both great for like buffing in. Um, because of the size, I feel like the fact that this is domed really doesn't make that much of a difference. It's not like I'm gonna get into much smaller crevices because it's just gigantic anyway. Um, so I like both of these. I find them to be fairly interchangeable. And then on July 11th, and I think this is the last one we'll talk about for this video, because again, I feel like I've been talking forever, is I did a video on the new, at that time, the new Surat Beauty lid lacquers. And I had gone out and purchased, I think four of these, and then Troy Surratt was so, so kind and contacted me over Instagram and was like, let me send you the other colors. And he also wanted to send me the sponge tip applicators that they released with these. So I love these. I don't think that they're especially um, practical. Uh, is that the word? I don't think they're especially practical. I don't think that they're an eye product that you're gonna throw on and it's not gonna move for like eight to 10 hours. It's This is definitely not that kind of eye product. But I think that this is a really special eye product. I think when you put it on, it looks so beautiful. I find it to be, it's much more emollient than like a cream shadow, but it's not anything like an eye gloss. It's like in between. So you can get like a nice editorial look with it without the goopiness of a gloss. And it's going to be a little bit more emollient and shiny than something like a cream shadow. So something I've mentioned every time I talk about these is what I have noticed is as long as I put like a light layer of this down, it doesn't crease, it doesn't move. Um, again, I don't really have creasing issues generally with my eyelids. 
eyelids. Um, I also have incredibly, incredibly dry eyelids. So I don't generally have that issue, but I think if you have really oily eyelids, if you always suffer from creasing, these maybe are not the product for you. I'm not positive, but that would be my guess. But I think your safest bet in using these products, and this is Shoe Eero, this one is my favorite, um, is just to use like a light layer. This isn't something that um, you wanna goop on, again, for like everyday wear. This isn't something I think you're gonna wanna put on like a thick, thick layer of it, because I think it will just, I don't know, it'll just crease and like get everywhere. Um, but I've seen a lot of editorial looks using these, and if you're a makeup artist, I think these are great because I think they're a lot easier to handle than like an eye gloss or adding pigment to something like Vaseline or whatever. And I think you're gonna get a very, very similar effect with these. So I really love these Surat Beauty lid lacquers. I feel like this is for me, someone who likes generally like very everyday wearable makeup looks, and I'm not trying to set like Instagram on fire with like my makeup looks. I just wanna like look nice and I wanna occasionally have fun. These are really, really great for that. So I love these. So he came out with two sponge tip applicators. One is like a finger, and this does work really, really great with these lid lacquers. I think it spreads them very, very evenly. Um, I think you can use it to pat it on if you wanna kind of like blend out the edges. I really like like this and the sponge is probably like the softest sponge I have ever felt and then there's a double-ended one that has like pointier uh, sponge tip applicators here and this one I never really used but this one I used it's still dirty actually I should wash this but this one I used but I just end up using my finger basically with these but if you're someone who doesn't like to use your finger or maybe you have long nails or whatever I think this is actually a pretty decent uh, applicator and these actually remind me of sponge tip applicators that come in eyeshadow this one to me is much more unique because it's much larger. You're not gonna find this in like an eyeshadow palette. And so I much prefer this one to the uh, double-ended one. All right, so that is it for this uh, part one mini reviews for products that I talked about last July. And again, I am trying to catch up. I'm trying to get to the point where I am only six months out. So we're in March now, which means I should be like in October. So I have a lot of time to make up for. So hopefully I'll be getting part two up. And in part two, it looks like I have a collective haul in there with some PR stuff. Uh, the Nordstrom anniversary sale was going on, some new Chanel stuff. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about in part two. Is this going to be three parts? Oh gosh. Well, we'll see. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video.